Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 78, end of August. We're getting close to a time when we hoped we had the Wix tool set out. We're going to talk about that today, uh, along with a bunch of other stuff in the agenda. Um, as always, this meeting is recorded now that I got the button working, which is why we're starting late. Uh, for those people that are unable to join us right here, right now, as always, you can go back to archives. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, the Fire Giant blog also does transcripts and all that kind of stuff for those that aren't able to be here and want to watch it later. Uh, today, what are we going to talk about? We'll do the triage because that's the first thing we typically do. We want to talk about SWID tags and 2015. Um, and that'll probably come up a little bit in triage uh, because there's a feature request open about that. And then I figured we should probably spend a little bit of time talking about Wix 310RC2. Uh, and then always we'll open the floor for questions, comments, things people want to talk about. So we have a full day. Sounds good, Bob? Sounds good to me. All right, let's go do triage right now. Do it. Boom, triage, five bugs. Although some of these are old and one is a feature request. So anyway, the RS cube cannot be found. We still haven't got log files back, things like this happening random. Um, he could be having a hard time getting it to repro and get a log file. Sure. Um, what do we want to do in the meantime? Should we suspend it and say, hey, please open this up as soon as you get a log file that shows this crazy problem? Yeah, let's. Uh, I'm not sure suspend is it, but yeah, let's let's resolve it and say, you know, we need your help. If you can get us the logs, we will definitely take a look. All right, let's do that. All right. Oh, 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 okay. Whew. Got nervous there for a minute. Never had the site go down on me during triage, but I guess it was the first time for everything. Uh, heat invalid payload for MSU packages. So this is the remote I didn't payload. Know that Heat even support MSUs. Well, uh, empty exactly version make, description product yeah. name. Yeah, probably it just, doesn't work. It lets you. You can harvest pretty much anything because um, you can also use this to, to create normal payloads. Um, but it's really useful for remote payload for an XE because it'll grab all the signatures and yeah. blah blah blah. Um, and I. <laughs> The problem is, I think, because of how remote payload works, it's only been, you know, to live tested with XEs. Yeah. Um, and technically, I took a quick look. It looks like Burn would happily use it for any kind of payload. Um, but, you know, the authoring, at least, is, is definitely geared around uh, XEs. Mm -hmm. MSUs and MSIs, MSPs, it could all work, um, but it would definitely require that we uh, beef up, well, beef up and uh, beef down, I guess, uh, remote payload. So it can, you know, like four MSUs, as Neil's talking about here, uh, we, don't, we don't want some of those elements. We don't need them, and we don't want them, um, whereas for an MSI, there'd be, you know, half a dozen yeah, more or more. More, um, so it's kind of yeah. I've, I've, I've I can see uh, it being more useful for MSUs. Yeah, or, I can along the lines of XEs because maybe they're big, and you can host them or not host them. You can not host them yeah. uh, by directly linking to some Microsoft SW link. All right, I guess yeah. Part of this is less of a bug and more of a feature to me. Um, I'd say more the thing that Heat Payload does today only works for XEs, and it may have to be enhanced to work for MSUs. Well, and and it's not just Heat; it's Remote Payload itself. And Remote Payload itself, yeah, it has to be yeah. enhanced to handle this case correctly. So, uh, I guess we could take it in 3.11. I assume it's going to be enhancement. Um, certainly not 3.9. Um, and uh, we could talk about how to build it. But this is more of a feature to me than a bug. Oh, um, for sure. Because it's, it's, it's like, a, yeah, we didn't really ever intend it to do that. But you could teach it to. Yeah. Yeah, it, it might be a bug in heat that it does the wrong thing. But, you know, right. it's definitely a feature request to get everything covered for. The bug in heat is that it didn't give you an error that said no. Uh, that's, that's fair. So Jacob is asking, you know, 3X or 4X. And I, so, I, so. I say. I say 3x because it's not breaking, but I'm more than happy to start pushing stuff to 4x. Um, uh, I guess yeah. I continue to use the if it's 
not a break, clearly a breaking change, we could take it in 3x. Um, it's physically possible. Right. So um, I'm inclined to put it that direction right now, and then we're going to eventually, in the not too distant future, I expect, have a discussion about what 3.11 is and what beyond 3.11 is. And right. that will start telling us where these bugs really go, for example. Yeah, it doesn't crash, so it's not 3x. <laughs> That'll work. I expect we're going to get there at some point, just like we did with Wix 2 and Wix 3 a long, 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 long time ago. Yep. Before we had these kind of meetings where we're like, no, we're not doing that anymore. We're just not doing that in Wix anymore. Go to Wix, or in Wix 2 anymore. Put it in Wix 3. It'll be great. Because we can't keep splitting our resources like this and get anything done. So, anyway, net, net, this could be done in 3x, and we can go from there. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. This one, in rare cases, burn incorrectly detects an MSI package as installed while the MSI package itself does not. So that means that the MSI APIs are broken. Right. Yeah, somewhere in here there's a, you know, someone went in and hacked the registry, essentially. Um, New versions in the background without rerunning the installer. But that could create problems. And they modified a display version. Okay. Rather than the version... If we, it seems like this will break Burns' package detection by potentially the package isn't installed when it actually is. Yeah, that's possible. So, yeah, this is all possible. I don't know. So, don't... Okay. I don't know what to do with that. They're They're messing with the metadata behind the scenes that we query through the APIs. Well, I can see certainly. So, in the the next last paragraph, the there's a comment about string versus version. recreating his his Windows profile, and after that point, it no longer works oh. correctly. Certainly, for a per user package, if you're messing could, with the profile, you're could. messing with everything. So it thinks it's installed, but it's not. So they need to do a repair if such a thing happened. I bet if they repaired, it might work. Well, might need a source prompt. But Burn would handle that. Um, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know what to say. We're using the MSI APIs, so the MSI APIs are being broken. And I'm not inclined to try to write code to second-guess the MSI APIs. I'm not even sure what we would do consistently. Right, 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 right. Say, ah, we'll install it anyway. No. Uh, I don't know what we do with this bug. So, well, okay, so so the, the detection stuff, you know, uh, we're, we're using the MSI API, and probably we're using it correctly. So I don't, I, I don't think, yes, I, so I don't think for that's actionable. For them to test this case, like, I think they said, yeah, they said, they just install the MSI and it installs. I'm like, well, sure, but, um, so I'm, I'm like, so, yeah, the MSI is like, cool, I'll install this. Hey, these files are missing. Let me put them on the machine. But still, it detected that there's there. You have to use the MSI API to detect if it's there or not, not where the MSI will install. Yeah. They'll install just fine, indicating, yeah. Well, no. So, if you double-click the MSI, and then it ran, if it was already there... Well, if you don't have any UI, it just went through and did whatever the standard behavior is for installed. I, this, this, their tests aren't valid here. But yes, the MSI could be... All right, I don't know what we do with this. The MSI APIs are broken on this machine. I don't know what else we look at. Right, I agree. Um, the The last paragraph is something um, install property version string instead of the install property version I don't know I'd have to go look at the code in the background without, see this whole in the background re, without rerunning the installer is sketchy if you modify that then that yeah, there's a whole certainly. lot of there's a whole lot of sketchy here that I'm not sure that this yeah yeah yeah, right. To me, it could break 
burns package detection potentially. Yeah, I think a package isn't installed when it actually is. Well, it's been tweaked. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't know what to do with this bug. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, like I said, detection. If something's broken there, and I don't. I don't see a way around that. The I, I'm. The install property version string is interesting, but it also seems really weird um, because we're getting install property, not reading from the ARP registry. So I'm, I, I, I guess I don't understand. If you use the install property, MSI is reading the display version in the background. That doesn't seem right. It also doesn't seem right to modify the display version. But even so, I, I'm I'm having trouble understanding why it you know would matter for the purposes of burn. Ah, oh, yeah, that's interesting. This oh. also, of course, brings up the idea of semantic versioning, but there. I'm, I don't know. I just I'm. So I think I'm one of the things that's it. tricky here is also they're like, why aren't we using um, install property version? And I don't I think. Looked at real quick. It's like so if you do that, it's, this is interesting. It's like these properties. It's in an install property version is in the set of properties that cannot be retrieved for products that are under a per user unmanaged context. Oh, well, that's one reason for users under than the current user account. So I think we probably don't use it because it has more restrictions than the one that we do use. Right. So the one that we are using probably just goes straight to the registry behind the scenes. Interesting. And so that's how they're noticing that it's different. Anyway, um, I, I, nothing in there suggests that we should do differently than what we're doing right now and end up with better behavior. Um, I'm not sure what to do when the MSI APIs are broken, other than don't hurt people's machines. I don't know what you do there. Had to recreate the Windows profile, and at that point it no longer worked correctly. So they had like a roaming app or something. Maybe. It's my guess, yeah. Well, I don't know what to do with this bug. Uh, all right, here's what we do. We we put it back as say try using if the try using the MSI uh detect APIs. I don't have those memorized off the top of my head. We can go take them out. That burn uses and see if those end up detecting that the MSI is installed. If those APIs are if they find that those APIs are saying that the MSI is not installed, then that would show that there is a bug in burn, right? Maybe we're incorrectly picking an error code or something. Right? Sure. Let's have them do that. Um, and then the reason we don't use we use install property version string is because according to the documentation it has fewer restrictions than install property version. So we pick the thing that seems like it will work in more cases, which seems like a wise thing to do in our scenario. And they should not be modifying stuff behind the back of the installer. They're just going to do that. Um, and hopefully from all of that, then they can reopen this bug. But at this point, I think we should resolve it as more information and wait to see if it comes back. Okay. Because their their hypotheses are not their their tests for their hypotheses are not great. Of the just double clicking on MSI is not enough for me to say yes. MSI correctly determined that the package is not installed. I don't necessarily yeah, yeah. believe that. That's fair. It could just be that the MSI had no UI, so when you double clicked on it, it did basic, <laughs> and it did a maintenance mode, which didn't have any reinstall mode thing set, but because the files were missing, hey, look, they all appeared, and everything was fine. Right, 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 right. So even though MSI thought the thing was installed before and after. Like, maybe the log file said, yes, this MSI was installed the whole time it was redoing. A thing. Anyway, it could be that, and I could be wrong, too. So I think the answer is they should do a little bit more work on these machines to see if the detect APIs actually do say the MSI is installed or not. Um, they can get a log file for when they just double clicked it to see if that how that turns out. And then the answer to their last question is we do it because documentation says it has few restrictions.
And they shouldn't be modifying installer data. And they should not be modifying installer data behind the installer. That is a path towards insanity. Please don't file bugs against us when you do that. File bugs against your thing that's doing that. It's hard enough getting the stuff right without people changing the rules as you're flying. Gravity is no longer up. What? Which way is it? Good luck with that. Cool? That works for me. All right. I tried to repeat that twice, so I gave you enough time to write something down. Yeah, I'm using shorthand. Yes, you're probably but I won't remember. That. I'm going to skip the feature. We'll do this bug, and then we'll come back to the feature. All right. Features, the next item in our agenda. All right. File search does not work inside a merge module. Yeah, I don't think this is true. Um, 1322 is something like, you know, empty path. Um, so my guess is that program file 64 folder was never set, mm -hmm. which might make sense if, say, if you don't have, search. if it's not a directory in your merge module, Wix is going to modularize the program file 64 folder ID. Yes. And then it will add the custom action to set it after. Whenever well, it but it. that custom action only comes from merge mod. That's what and I'm I saying. Merge mod isn't going to randomly look at every potential directory. I think it's only going to pay attention to directories in the directory table. Oh, yeah. So if you don't have a program file 64 folder in the merge module, it'll That's never create the modularized one. I, I would go another bet, and even if they do have this in their directory table, that the uh, maybe the uh, custom action doesn't run early enough. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, <laughs> uh, bet and bet, chances are it's going to be one of those things. Right. Um, and the answer is, yeah, what? I guess we'd have to modularize the directory search path there. Nah, so that won't do it either. Not, not modularize it, because then it would pick it up from the oh, the real one. MSI. Right. It's really a sketchy thing to use anyway um, during app searches, right? Well, I guess they work because they're set so early in the Windows installer, or they're available so early in the Windows installer. Except maybe not for much of the rise directories, but yeah. Yeah. This file search does not work inside a merge module. Right. It's not file search that doesn't work. It's directory search, actually. Probably. Um, I'm not sure what we do about that. I'm not the best, sure the best way to fix that. Because if we don't put the GUID on it, then that requires the MSI to have the folder defined, which isn't the correct thing according to the spec, because the merge module is supposed to have it, and then there'll be a custom action that sets it. Except app search does happen so damn early. I'm wondering but if app search it's happens possible really to early. Mix, mix and match those things. Yeah. Don't use merge modules. Well, use a Wix that's lib. my first, my first uh, approach. Use a Wix lib. Solves yeah. all these, avoids all these problems. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't solve any of them. It just avoids them all. Yeah. <laughs> um, a code you don't have to work around is. Uh... Yeah. Well, I yeah. guess they need. It would be good for them to look at their MSI, see which one of these things is wrong, you know, check the state of program file 64 folder at the time that this thing is running, and then can go from there. I'm not sure how we would fix it, but that's probably the problem. I suppose uh, we could have a suppressed modularization on the searches that take paths. That's going to require that the containing MSI has program file 64 folder, right? Do you have to have it defined to get it? No. No? So you can still get it even no. if you don't have it in your directory table? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. You All don't have it in your directory table. All those will come yeah. whenever you ask for them. Right. It's not probably the correct... That's the probably not what the spec says to do, but... Well, and also I'm... It's very like... I mean, I, I'm... I'm I think if either of our guesses are correct, the problem has existed, you know, since Wix Forever. 1. 
So before well, Wix. Wix too. Well, okay, sure. <laughs> the problem has always existed. Yes. Um, so it being, you know, late 2015, I'm kind of wondering if this is something we would bother to fix. Even if uh, I, I, I'm just trying to give him the right direction of how to go fix it himself. Yeah, yeah. And agreed. then once we know that, then we'd be like, oh, okay, so this is the exact fix, and right. I would probably suspend it. Actually, why don't we why don't we put all that information in and then suspend the bug? Okay, I, that works. I just like yeah, I don't. Resolution merge module. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so many little problems with them. The problem, see, the thing, part of the per frustration for me personally is that when I wrote the merge module spec. I said we should not modularize the standard properties because so oh, standard directories, standard any standard properties, directories included. Um, are the stand, are the other properties modularized? Actually, that's a good point. Maybe only directories are. I forget. But I was like, don't do that. And the problem there was argued that the what you get merge conflicts on those particular rows. If the MSI already had a program file 64, you would have sure. a merge conflict. And my, right. my thing was, yeah, so ignore it. Right. Declare it expected. Hey, look, they already defined it. Merge model doesn't have to add its thing and carry on. And it's not an error, not a warning. It's a, and for some reason, that was deemed not a good solution. So instead, later, um, when I was back in college, they added the GUID and put the custom actions in, of course, which then wrecks havoc on all kinds of crazy things that depend on the timing of those custom actions. Mm -hmm. I suspect that this is one of them. Probably. Anyway, that, that's my guess. There you go. Those of you that were listening in today, there's a little bit of ancient history from 1998 and 1999. Pretty much qualifies. The only reason I know that is because I was an intern in 98 and I graduated uh, from university in 99. So, um, cool. We'll go back to the slide deck and we'll come back to this. Cool? Works. Works. Swid tag, fun stuff. So, Swid tag, there's a whip out for this if you want to go see it. It came out late last night, so I totally understand that if you didn't miss it. Uh, you may remember that Wix has had support for Swid tag since, oh, what is it? At least 3.6, right? 3.7? Uh, yeah, I think it was 3.6. Yeah, 3.7 yeah, was small. I think it was 3.6. Yeah, so it was a spec from the ISO people that build specs that want to identify software, and it's actually, you know, it's not about a horrible way of finding stuff that you install on the machine through a standard way. Um, their XML was ugly, my humble opinion. Um, and in somewhere in 2014, they decided they were going to fix that, so they heavily revised the spec, and now in 2015, and now it is near the end. It is being launched or announced and all that kind of good stuff. So the people that asked uh, that we do this before to help you know, promote the spec, um, who have even more people on the list stepping up to implement with tags, asked if we could get this in Wix for their announcement in September. So um, I was like, well, we could take a little time. So uh, Fire Giant basically is going out and said, yeah, okay, we'll go do the work. Um, pulled some time, did a pull request, got all this stuff to try to slip in Wix 3.10 so that Wix 3.10 can implement the basics of the spec uh, when they announce the spec and have a whole bunch of people say, yeah. This is generally good for the Wix tool set because it allows all these very large um, organizations and enterprises to say, oh, the Wix tool set supports it, therefore they can point at a tool that can actually do this stuff, other tools do it. It's good that the Wix tool set does it so people will say, yes, you can use Wix to build your stuff that I will then install in my very large organization. So all of that made it a seem like a very good thing to do in these short time frames, which is the exact same reason we did it last time in a relatively short time frame. So these guys tend to show up like right when we're shipping a Wix drop. Um, and if they didn't have really friendly people and very compelling stories for large organizations wanting this stuff, I'd be a little less accommodating. But it's a good thing for everybody in the end. Um, I have no idea why this format's like there's a new line on the... I, my mouse cursor's gone, but like, why do I get this extra little orange in my gray boxes? I don't get it. Anyway, uh, so there's a whip. Uh, the changes are relatively straightforward. Um, 
in the code to use this new XML format that they've defined. They simplified the concept of reg ID, which is good because the last one was a little bit harder to calculate. Now it's really easy to calculate. You basically take your domain and strip off HTTP and www, if that makes sense. Um, the hardest part was that you have to install these things in the install location with the application, which makes a whole lot more sense than installing it in a central common, you know, program data or local app data, but um, it is a little bit harder for us to install because we don't know where the install directory for an app is. So that took a little bit more extra work um, on the side, but those SWIP kind of walks through all of that, those changes and things that were done. So net net, the idea is that we'd like to see the spec. Did I get it? Oh, look at that. Um, we'd like to kind of slip this in at the last minute until X310. Um, after being on it for a while um, to support these guys. Um, otherwise, it goes in 3.11, and we don't know the date, and they kind of go, oh, well, it'll be supported in Wix in the future, which is not as good a story for us, um, for all these people that might be looking to this spec. There's a whole bunch of wandering stuff to kind of say, hey, how about we take this in 3.10 at the last minute, which we would normally not do. Um, but huge sponsorship behind it. Thoughts, questions, things? Bob's muted himself, so he's not even going to talk to me. I was typing, um, and I've heard the story. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, so to be fair, we did go to Bob, and the reason we haven't been talking about this a lot outside is because we got a uh, spec that we weren't allowed to send around to lots of people as a proof. So it's kind of like, hey, here's the what's going to be uh, the proof, the final revision. Can you guys look at that without going around and doing too much with it? Now that they're all ready to talk about it, in the next week, we can finally talk about all this stuff. And I reviewed um, the whip and the pull request. It, I'm, I was, I was wary because <laughs> um, uh, at least in Burn, this is a change to a common code path. For MSI packages, it's not. You have to, you know, explicitly be using the the tag extension mostly. There are changes, you know, in in routine code paths, and that makes me nervous and sweaty. But I'm kind of used to that. Um, burn, it's it's in line. You know, all the changes are are happening in Burn. Um, so I was a little ner a little nervous about that. But the truth is, really, the biggest change is just the change in the XML output. You know, the rest of it is, is you know, what I consider plumbing code. Um, it's just to get the, the the logical changes through the system. And on the upside, should anything go wrong, we will still be here to fix it very quickly. <laughs> Versus a drive-by, hey, here, let's drop some code off. It'll right. be a very fast turnaround fix for this. I hope nothing goes wrong, but should something go wrong, we'll be fixing it quickly. Anyway, John's not here. We need John to do a plus one or whatever. We were actually talking to him about, to this, about this a little bit before the last meeting, I think. Um, and we miss it this week. Shucks. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with taking it um, in, in no small part because you just volunteered to quickly fix any regression. Yes, so. yes. We'll all, we'll all be on top of it yep. if anything is wrong, including, heaven forbid, a change to the spec you know, or something like that. Right, right. Because it's always possible at the last minute, I guess. Plus one distracted, plus one. I don't know. It's interesting. A plus one to be distracted? I get that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've lost Sean and Jacob. Oh, yes. Yeah. Their SWIG tags are interesting things. We actually, at FireJet, we're starting to play with them more. Um, there is proofs available of the spec, but you have to go get them from people that have them. And I only know the people that did the SWIG tags before, so they contacted me and said, hey, you did this before. Can you 
fix it. We're coming out with a new spec. It's like, ah, lovely. Let's do that. So that's what we did real quick. In this case, the spec is no. basically just the schema for the XML, right? Yeah, the, is the definition of it. The spec is public. You just have to be an ISO to see it. If you're on this board and all that kind of stuff, you can actually see the spec. They actually did that with. Uh, that's, that's how they do like all the standard specs. thing. It is right. How they do yeah, all it's like the C plus plus specs were the same thing. It's C like, plus plus specs are the same thing. ISO specs operate this way. I have odd, had people being upset about the way that ISO runs some of these things. I don't understand enough of it to. I don't know enough of other standards bodies to. No, certainly not open source, <laughs> which I get much better than ISO standardization stuff. I'm learning more and more every time I get into one of these things. Fortunately, I didn't have to attend all of the meetings where they fought out every single line of code or every line of code, ugh, every sentence in the spec. No, thank you. I'll just write the code, thanks. The XSD is public. Cool. That's awesome. I'm glad they made the XSD public. So, anyway, it's a good thing for Wix as a whole. It was a good thing the last time we got it. Um, it was honestly, it was one of the most, it was one of the fastest adopted Wix features that I ever saw at Microsoft. <laughs> Office, Visual Studio, everybody jumped on board because these large organizations are like, we want this implemented. So, hey. We want to make sure they can again say, oh, look, with 310, we have it. Carry on. Keith isn't here. He could talk about Visual Studio's use of their current, the current tagging stuff. So. All right. 310 RC2. Tonight? Tomorrow? Thoughts? Well, let's go... Take a look at the pull requests. Pull requests. Oh, you want to do pull requests. Well, that's a little bit harder. Uh, Shouldn't be. Let me grab it here. Well, it is because I don't have a mouse. Uh, oh, that is that is tougher. Um, right now, the, the Swin Tags pull request is the only one uh, that's open. Yes. That isn't in another release. Sorry, yes. 310. The only thing that is a candidate for 310. Woohoo! And, um, and like I said, I've already reviewed it and you've done some corrections and. Yep, push those uh, out as quickly as possible. Yep. Uh, so. Yes, that's one of the exciting things about SWIT tags. Jacob's still talking about SWIT tags. Is it's breaking change. Yes, it is one of the more interesting things, and that was one of the reasons they wanted us to uh, make this change sooner than later, is that the they don't want a proliferation of um, old tag, or they want to cut off the proliferation as much as possible. So they didn't want people going out, joining on the spec, using the Wix functionality that's in Wix 3.10, and building old tags. <laughs> and waiting for new tags to show up. So minimize the break by basically spitting out a warning that says, hey, you're using old tag format. You should update to the new tag format. So the, the 2015 revision is explicitly not not backward compatible. Correct. It deprecates the V1, the okay. whatever. I, I call them V2, V1. Yeah, there's the 2015, and I don't know what the other one was numbered. I don't know if it, it was like one. It didn't have a year in it or whatever. And they definitely do not, they don't want that one continuing. There's much discussion about breaking and not breaking and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't that merely force any existing users of old tags that they must upgrade or their installer dev must use an old version of Wix? Existing users of old tags. 
that they must upgrade or the installer dev must use it. If they upgrade, they get the new tags, which is the goal. If they want to maintain the old tags, then yes, they'll have to maintain an older version of the Wix tool set, but that's explicitly the goal is to avoid the old tags. Yeah, so the, the consumers of SWID tags will want the new spec because that's where everything is at. Yeah, all the software is moving forward to the new spec. They actually have a lot more consumers than they do producers in the spec is what I'm guessing, given the way the spec is written, even the wording in it. When you read it, you're like, clearly they're more focused on the consumers than they are the producers, which kind of makes sense if you think that consumers outnumber the producers, but it is a little bit of a chicken and egg problem when you don't have producers producing it. So, um, well, anyway. if, if you go to the, the Wikipedia page, not that, you know, quoting Wikipedia as, a, <laughs> as an authoritative source, but they talk about it as IT asset management. So this is all about like software inventory and, yes. and you know, <laughs> other things that IT groups do to make users' lives miserable. Um, <laughs> well, well yeah. this is just a part of it. Sorry, you know, this isn't. Well, to be yeah. fair, to be fair, identity is one of the harder problems, and so to have something that defines fair. an identity is a good thing. And we're looking at how to push this even farther to make it even more useful uh, going. And the general gist we got was they don't want to be propagating the old world. Thus, yeah, the that, approach that that's, the, here. that's the weird part, right? You know, you think about about other ISO standards, and it's all about you know compatibility. And I don't think they had much. Of, my my best guess, and I'm here. I'm on the record, so we'll see. Someone else could correct me. That's actually in these things is I don't know that they had significant adoption of the old spec, um, and that they pushed out here. That's yeah. Sounds reasonable. Using the old format and other consumer one in new format. So, so Jacob, if if we get in that situation, we'll do the work to build. If we get enough people that are like having to can produce old tags, we can look at doing the work. I mean, at Fire Giant, we'll look at doing the work for building the old tags. We're yeah, I, to be honest, I don't, I don't want it. That's and I, I way more complex this. code. It like, it, re it really complicates the code, yeah. and it also forces burn to carry, you know, both sets, and it's just, it, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of that, you know. We end up carrying along N versions to, to you know, satisfy that kind of, that kind of model, and in this case, if, if the standard makers are saying, you know, don't do this, then I'm kind of like, okay, you know, happy to, uh, uh, to let them, you know, make a decision that they theoretically should know about. So Phil asks about 4049, where this thing was constantly being written to a place and uh, breaking incremental build. Um, and so we made a big step in this tag to um, fix that. And my hope is that we can get the incremental build working better on this. Um, the next time we take a shot. It was too much change and too small a window to get that completely fixed. But it should be, we're certainly closer on the incremental build. I don't think we have the times, file stamp times quite right. But we did get it out of the template path, which was a big first step. So, and And honestly, I didn't think we could do that in 310, we found an easy way of doing it in 310 that didn't break things, so that's why we're able to do it. So it may be that we can bring this bug back um, to 3x, 311, to try to fix it there too, given what we found. Um, but we'll see. That's just incremental link, right? Incremental link. Okay. Yeah, not incremental build. I mean, but it, well, it does link. Is, it, yeah, it causes your linking to happen. Yeah, the time and that is eighty-five percent of the 
build time, but if not more. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you're right. Cool, cool. It's all quiet out there. Everybody's like, ooh, this is interesting. All right. Yeah, it's it's a big. We, we it's certainly did a bigger welcome. change than, than I would like at this point. Absolutely, but the truth is, you know, this is an area where Wix can can play can play quickly um, in an area that you know has a certain amount of attention from people that care. Well, and that you know consume a lot of software. Also a good thing, yeah. It all seems aligned. This has always felt very aligned with what we were doing. Yeah. Although, unfortunately, the alignment uh, also seems to coincide with release dates. Yeah. So. A little too closely aligned, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. So if we take that whenever. If you've done pull requests, things like that, we could do a build tonight unless we want to not put this in RC2, but I think if we take it, we probably want RC2. Oh, we absolutely want this in RC2, yeah. Right. So next build. Tonight. Tonight? All right. Let's do it. No reason to hesitate. Can we get a, 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 a hallelujah, a, a plus one, and anything? <laughs> really do miss John. He's so good at that. It's like right on top of it. There we go. Got to vote. All right, Sean. So I think on the heels of Wix 3.10 RC2, we'll also get a uh, Wix v4 build out since Sean has a bunch of the pulls over. We'll get that over. It will not have all the SWID tag stuff in it um, for four tonight. We'll get that in the next build. Um, might take a shot at the um, incremental build issue. But tonight, Wix 3.10 RC2. So we can, I guess we'll launch it tomorrow. Tell everybody about it tomorrow morning. Uh, okay. Yes, please. Write the blog post, do all that kind of good stuff tomorrow morning. Try to get drum up some support so that we can talk about when is, the, and I, there's supposed to be another bullet point here. Um, so when do we want to try to launch it? Assuming everything goes peachy, and I'm saying that almost feels like I'm going to jeopardize it. Um, yes. Um, when is Labor Day? The 7th of September? Labor Day is the 7th, yes. That seems fast. It's two weeks. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half by the time we launch it. One and a half by the time we launch it. Right. Any thoughts? People aren't sleeping out there? Feels back to being distracted? Um, well, there are shiny things around. I know it's a problem I have. It's nice and just beautiful weather out here today. I want to go leave right now, but I'm here with some of my best friends in the Wix group, so this is makes up for it. Um, so, launch when? All right, all right. Come on, Jacob, Sean, pick a date. Throw out a date. Some date. Phil, pick a date. When should we launch this thing? Should I get my dartboard? We'll have a build tonight for our C2. We're talking about when do we do RTM, assuming it goes well. We need to have, you know, start thinking about what we're ratcheting down. This is this is the idea of if everything goes well, we get, you know, there's there's no feedback. I think we have to wait at least two um, two two meetings. All right, that means we're not hitting Labor Day. I think if yeah, I I think we want. I think we want, you know, we need at least a week of, of people looking at it. That That's what happened with RC, well, RC1, as it turns out. You know, within a, a week, we had a nice accumulation of bugs for the next meeting. Um, well, we'll have now, four we, we could also just, weekend. Yeah, I mean, we could say we'll, we can launch on Labor Day if, you know, by that Monday morning when we're celebrating our labor by working, which is what we There's, do here. Yes. Um, um, and, and there's, you know, there's nothing scary, you know, in, in the untriage bugs, then we're good to go. I'm assuming we're taking zero bugs. 
Well, if we take a bug, I do think we. Oh, if we take a bug, we're we're we slip yeah. again. For we're, sure. we're slipping. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. So if by that Monday there's nothing scary, you know, in in I don't know, uh, All right. in my perception, I guess, then yeah, we can ship it. All right. If there's anything you know scary or concerning or troubling or other adjectives there, um, wait, is that an adjective? Yeah, scary. Um, I think is a adjective. Yeah, it's. Um, sorry, I confused myself with troubling. Wait, it's, never mind. Um, grammar geek. Um, yeah. So, where the hell I was going with this? If there's anything scary, we'll 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 slip. If not, then we're, I think we're clear on on Labor Day. All right, I'm excited. It's it's a little it's rushed. It's quick, but. You know, everything that we've taken is is handleable. And I don't mind, you know, what's the, you know, pulling the cord and, and slipping if we have to. Yeah. All right, check your type something, so I want to get that before I move on. I'm going to comment on code in the PR. Okay. Cool. Yeah, please. More more people looking at it, the better. It's part of the reason it's still open. Um, yeah. Haven't merged yet. I have a green button on screen, but I haven't clicked it. In fact, I'll change tabs just so I don't accidentally. Big green button. Must push. Must push. Um, Actually, I'd probably push from the command line because that's what I you did. Do. A buddy. I did a buddy build, so. Ah, yes. Many buddy builds, many installs here. Mm-hmm. All right. Other things. Things people want to talk about. As wordy and noisy as the peanut gallery has been today, I'm expecting we're not going to get a lot. Discussions, thoughts, other things people want to discuss besides the things that we've discussed and are going to continue to discuss in the places that they are appropriately discussed. Anything else going on out there? Clearly, it's all about Wix 3.10. I am. Part of me wants to just finish this thing to get the Wix Visual Studio 2015 support out, so people will quit yeah. asking about that. That's and fair. And then get on to Wix 4. I would like to see more there. Jar signing? No, I'm not signing jars. I don't do Java, so... i assuming that's what joy of jar signing is. It's not it's supposed it's to be it's singing. That would have been really funny. Jar singing. If it's jar singing, that sounds like in the direction of bluegrass. I might be down with that. Um, or maybe canning. Canning? <laughs> Signing your jars of, of oh yes, yeah, you're famous. Salsa. If you're if you're famous, salsa sure, sure. You're writing on the side and uh, permanent marker. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, having fun. Anything else? Going, going, gone? No, maybe? All right, I guess we'll declare that success. Um, Until next week. Next week will be another one of these fun meetings where we sit and stare at all the bugs and hope nothing actually affects the release. Um, I guess tomorrow will be an exciting day uh, when we get a whole bunch of blog posts, news posted, and get people onto Wix 3.10 RC2 and try to landed as the last final really no kidding no more releases kinds of things right if right goes yeah. well if we have to rebuild it means we're not having labor day yes so. and so it might push out the or it might uh focus on the message that we're trying to hit labor day to make everybody happy when they come back from work come back from a holiday come back from work upgrade your wix 3 and suddenly visual studio 215 will be officially supported and all that kind of good stuff there we go Oh. Um, so please help us verify the RC2 that is coming out tomorrow. Those of you that are watching this now, um, probably by the time you're watching this, we might have a build. If not, we will have a build probably within four hours kind of thing, and we'll be on to better places. Cool? I think that's where you're supposed to say yeah, Bob. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Hoo-yah. All right, here we go. Okay. 
So, given that wonderful meeting, I really do miss John. He really does add the energy to the meeting. Um, everybody else is like off writing code or stuff. Uh, <laughs> just giving you guys a hard time. Um, we'll call it good. Until next week, lots of things will happen between now and then, but hopefully no bugs. Uh, you guys uh, have fun, and we'll see you later. Bye.